In this lecture we will talk about continuation passing style. I apologize for, for any weird sounds that might uh, be uh, heard on this video because I'm home alone due to the corona situation with a five-year-old and a cat and, and, and they are making a lot of weird sounds at times. I have divided this lecture into two parts. The first which will deal about with um, continuations themselves and the second part which will deal with con um, composition of continuations. So continuation passing style is a way of, of programming. It's um, similar to or equivalent to what is called direct style, the, the style of programming that we have used so far and that you are used to where you have normal functions uh, taking an argument and returning a value. Uh, continuation passing style is slightly different. Um, it's a very powerful technique, but it should be used with care. So there's the old mantra, don't use more power than you need. Because if you're careless with continuation passing style, you can very easily create very uh, code which is very hard to understand and maintain becomes a complex functional spaghetti. So why do we use it then? Well, particularly in, in pure functional programming, certain things uh, are very nicely expressed in terms of these continuation passings. Uh, things like exceptions, threading, asynchronous computations, coroutine, and, uh, and detailed flow control sort of the functional equivalent of the go-to statement. All of these things can be nicely expressed in terms of, of continuation passing style. A continuation is essentially just a callback function. And we have seen many of these, like a normal higher order function. Um, but the way it works is that instead of having a function which just takes a value and then returns a new value, instead you have a function which takes a uh, a value and a, a callback function and instead of returning just the, the value of the computation it will call the callback function with the value it produced. So, so, the, so the callee will not return, it will pass it on to some other function which it, again in itself might pass on the continuation to yet another function and yet another function until you reach the end and, and the continuation that will got passed in in the beginning, the, the callback function eventually gets called. So to look at this in a little bit more in concrete way, we can look at uh, direct style and contrast it to, to continuation passing style. So here we see that we have um, a function f, which is just a normal function from a to b, and underneath we can see the same function but expressed using uh, continuation passing style. And you see that it the signature of this continuation passing style function is it takes a value a and then it takes another argument which is I have called cont which is a function from b to some value r and then the whole thing returns a r. And you see that the b uh, going into the cont is the same as the b that would normally be returned by, by the function uh, in direct style. Alternatively, if you want to make it slightly more readable, because this becomes very messy when, when dealing with these continuation functions and writing them out, um, is that we can, we can wrap it in a type that we can call cont, uh, which is parameterized over two generic uh, variables, r for the return type and a for, for the input type. So that's just the, the sort of the continuation thing. So then we can rewrite this FCPS version as A to a continuation. So one way of, of thinking about these continuations, one was to think about them as just having, having a callback function, but another way of thinking about them is that these um, uh, continuations are like suspended computations. They need some further action, some further function in order to complete, to complete the calculation. And, and if we go back and look at this, this uh, in particular this uh, upper version of this FCPS, you see that, well, it takes an A, and then when you think about partial application, 
then you have actually this thing uh, return a higher order function which needs to be called in order to produce the result. So this is sort of the suspended uh, computation. The continuation of passing returns a higher order function which we then need to call in order to complete the whole thing. Uh, a slightly more philosophical way of viewing this is, is that essentially values are meaningless until we use them. Like, take a value of 5. What is the meaning of 5? It's, it's only when we say, well, specify something like five apples. Well, that means something, but it's when I say I eat five apples that, that the, the sort of the five actually starts meaning something for real. And um, so that's one way of looking at it. And, and you can see here I've, I've implemented five in terms of, of continuation passing, so, which is kind of weird because I can say, well, I can create the function five which takes a function f and co applies it to 5, which is stored inside of this, this function, basically as a, as a closure. And in order to use this thing, um, I call it with, for example, with 5 string, where string is just uh, a function to take, take the output uh, of, of whatever and, and return a string of it. So let's see how this looks in, in, in real life if we go to Visual Studio Code. So here I've, uh, I've uh, created a little helper P, just to make things short, which is just, will print anything. Um, and then I have this uh, cont wrapper. I won't be using it much, but I will show how to do it. So let's uh, implement this five thing and see how it works. So first we need to put these things, all of these things into F sharp interactive and we can see right so here down here you can see I called uh, five string and I'll put it to P and it prints five in as a string so what's going on well this is very simple five is a higher order function it takes a function in this case string and then it just says string five I can type it down here explicitly string 5 and you see that it produces the string 5 or I can say 5 string and it produces the value of 5 so there's there's no really no magic what is slightly um, magical is this which is uh, implementing the exact same thing but now using the partially applied pipe operator. So there's a thing that you can think about for a while. Um, uh, how that works. But it's it's really quite quite straightforward. Okay, so back to the slides. So I said that we can think about these continuations as callbacks and I think that's probably the easiest way to think about them. Uh, at least mentally and um, and here I show you a, 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 diff a slightly different variation of the theme so I have defined a function g which takes a value a as input and then it has two continuations so this is a function that can fail for some reason it can fail and instead of, of returning options and doing that kind of thing instead I have two continuations one which will get called with the uh, with the value e, which is the sort of exception value or the error code or whatever we have in it, uh, which gets called if the function fails. And there's another one which is the success continuation, which gets called if the computation succeeds. So, so this is this is. Um, can be quite mind-bending. So here's a weird and wonderful example of, of um, what you can do with these type of things. So if we look at this list map here, in the first, first the function that I map over uh, with is this is sort of the continuation passing uh, version of the value of two. 
I do that by, by partially applying the pipe operator onto 2. So that's basically the value 2 but unfulfilled. So it needs, it needs the verb. It needs something to do before it can, it can do something. So let's go to Visual Studio Code and see how this, how this works. There. Weird and wonderful. Let's see what, what the result of this thing is. So let's just uh, run it. And you will see that it produces uh, 4, 6 and 44. Okay, sorry. Okay, so, so how does this really work? So remember that the pipe operator itself, um, it takes a value on, on its uh, left hand side and it takes a function on its right hand side. So what, what we're really having here is essentially something like this. We have oops, um, two um, and and then we apply it. So this, this is, this is uh, the, the left hand side is two and then we need to have a function to apply to. to. So now I can partially apply for example Oh, now Visual Studio Code is making a mess of this. Partially apply. Uh, let's see if this works. Partially apply a two to the multiply, which makes creates a function of one variable, which will then get applied with a two. So let's see if we put this into Visual Studio. And yes, we do get four. And we can of course go back up here and change that into a 3 and we get 6 and we can go up again and change that into a plus 42 and we get 44 which is exactly what we got when we ran this thing 4 6 and 44 it's pretty weird but uh, can be useful so you store functions in the list and then you and you, you store your unfulfilled computation here uh, as a function and then you apply it to those functions. All right, so let's do an example. Um, Pythagoras. First we will do it uh, with normal direct style uh, using normal functions and then we'll do the same thing all over again using continuation passing style and see how that how that pans out. Um, so here I defined uh, three functions, add, which is just an alias for, for plus, square uh, of x, which squares x, and then Pythagoras of x and y, which adds uh, the square of x and square of x. And that's pretty, pretty simple and straightforward. So we can look at that in Visual Studio Code. Go here, Pythagoras. Okay, fire in the hole, and we do <clears throat> Pythagoras for 2 and 3 gives us 8. Okay, so that's fine. So how does the continuation passing style version of this look like? Here it is. So I've done this in two different ways, just to show you the alternative. Um, so I've did, created an add CPS of x and y, but now it returns a function which takes an argument f which itself is a function which gets then applied to x plus y. So let's contrast this to, to, the, to the add normal add which basically is just add x y getting applied directly. Um, so this lambda function fun f is really sort of the continuation bit. I created using a lambda. The other way of doing this is if we look at square uh, CPS is instead of using a lambda I can just say uh, x and give the f explicitly as an argument and then just say well okay square CPS is f applied to x squared. Contrast that with the normal square. These two are just the two different ways of doing the same thing. Okay. So how do I call this thing? 
Well, that's slightly more involved because now I see, okay, Pythagoras, CPS, XY, um, and F. So again, I'm I'm not using an extra lambda because it, they, they tend to get kind of messy when you get a lot of lambdas. So first I call square CPS. So when doing these CPS things, everything goes sort of backwards uh, in the opposite order of, of uh, nor what you normally would do. Um, I could do y first and x then, but uh, since since addition is uh, commutative, I don't really doesn't matter. So first I call uh, square CPS with x, and that of course is a, since it's a continuation passing function, I need to pass it the continuation, which needs to be a function which accepts the result of the computation, the squaring, and then uses it for something. And that something is calling square CPS again, but now with the y value. And that function again needs to have a yet another continuation. And then in, finally it will call add CPS and it will use the x prime and y primes that we produced uh, earlier. And then it will call the f that we gave it. Maybe it's string, maybe it's print, maybe it's something else. We don't know. So let's look at that. So Pythagoras CPS. So we add the code here and run it. Two and three. Oh, that gave me a different. What happened here? Okay. Um, I had bu a bug in my uh, first Pythagoras version, so that's what, why I got confused, because I had squared x twice and not square x and square y. So uh, 13 is the correct uh, Pythagoras value for, for this. So the CPS version was, was correct. So, so what you see here is um, that using um, continuation passing can sort of become slightly hard to read. Um, so, so there's no point in doing CPS unless you have some proper, proper use for it. So let's go back to the slides. Oh, that was the end of part one. So in the next, uh, next um, lesson, we will start looking at how to compose these, uh, these um, continuations. Because of course, as functional programmers, the most important property of anything is, is composition. So until then, bye.